module 19 i dr rita pratap associate professor department of drawing and painting university of rajasthan jaipur i am going to speak on the haroti school of painting in the beginning i'll start with bundi school haroti the country of hada rajputs comprises the territories of two states bundi and kota bundi is situated amidst thick forests and hills it has marwar on its west and jaipur tonk on its north bundi is divided from the sister state kota by the river chambal the national beauty of this place comprises of mountains covered deeply with vegetation lakes streams and dense forests the influence of the rulers of the chauhan dynasty were confined to the region of bundi kota and jhalawad hence the area is termed as haroti region the town of bundi where painters lived is said to have been founded by rao deva in the middle of the 14th century history of bundi can be visualized from the time of rao surjan singh 1554 to 1585 ad who gave up mewar vassalage in order to become a feudatory of the moguls with the surrender of the famous fort ranthambore to akbar in 1569 he was made the general of the mughal army and received great honors he bestowed the title of rao raja a painting of rao surjan's elephant bahale rao and anipa is considered a copy of the former in view of the excellent drawing the earliest document which displays the emergence of a distinct bundi idiom is a ragamala painted at chunar in 1591 by sheik hasan sheik ali and sheik hatim pupils of mir sayed ali and khwaja abdu samad another ragamala set was painted in 1690 based on the classic chunar ragamala set the compositions became simpler and the vegetation was suggested with hurriedly touched strokes his grandson rao ratan singh 1607 to 1631 was greatly favored by jahangir who confirmed him the high titles of sar buland rai and ram raj his reign also marks the beginning of the extensive contact between the bundi rulers and the deccan which is responsible for the appreciable deccan influences in bundi painting ragini bhairavi of 1625 ad in collection of municipal museum alabad and rag deepak in bharat kala bhavan banaras are earlier known examples of bundi school rao satrushal 1631 to 1659 became the most powerful ruler of bundi he was made the governor of delhi by the mughal ruler shah jahan and later he played a conspicuous part in the subjugation of deccan during his reign many artists were given patronage and bundi paintings made rapid progress rang mahal was built by him and the frescoes which adorn its wall and ceiling are contemporary in the book indian painting in bundi and kota wg archer has reproduced two paintings of rao satrushal in one he is paying homage to shah ja and in another he is riding an elephant bodhi artist had their own standards of feminine beauty in a receding forehead and chin 
a strong nose and full cheeks and sharply penciled eyebrows. The landscape with its lakes, date palms and plantains is also faithful to that of Boondi colors. Pure blues, red, yellows and greens are boldly used. Design and composition are sure and strong. His son and successor Bhav Singh 1650 to 1682 AD was also a keen lover of art, music and poetry. Poets like Mati Ram enjoyed the patronage of Bhav Singh whose Lalita Aliam and Ras Raj greatly impressed artists and lovers of art. Many paintings of Rag Ragini Naika Bhed, Krishan Leela of his time adorn the private collections and museums. Traditional drawings on the basis of Ras Raj were initiated in this period. A Ragamala dated to 1680 is the best known example of Bundi workmanship. Bhav Singh and his son Anirudh Singh, 1681 to 1685 AD, fought along with imperial forces in the Deccan. During his time, Boondi's style acquired a lyrical quality. An earliest dated painting to this period is of hero and heroine in a pavilion, 1682 AD. Another painting of 1689 AD is of lovers pointing to the crescent moon by artist Mohan during the reign of Rao Buddha Singh 1695 to 1731. Bhim Singh of Kota seized Bundi in 1719 AD, forcing the former to free. In this period, the southern style influenced the Bundi painting. In 1710, Rao Bhim Singh, 1705 to 1720 AD of Kota, annexed Bundi, but Bud Singh's son, Rao Umed Singh, 1739 to 1771 AD, returned to Bundi in 1748 with the help of the Marathas. Under his reign, Bundi painting entered its most glorious phase. It acquired refinement and passionate feeling which make it out from other Rajasthani paintings, thus maturing both in quality and quantity. An example of the painting of the period of Rao Umed Singh shows Lady Honey Sweet, an illustration of the Ragini Madhu Madhvi Bundi, about 1780 from the collection of Alva Museum, Alva. The heat of the summer has ended. In the delightful season of the rains, amorous fancies stir among the young there are dark clouds in the sky which is lighted by flashes of lightning. As the lady rushes to the pavilion where the bed is ready, a peacock starts screaming. With a startled gesture, she lifts her arm, for in Hindi poetry, the peacock is a symbol of the lover. The love tale of Madhavnala and Kama Kandala, written in 1583 by Jodh, a court poet of Akbar, was a popular subject of the Rajasthani painting. The given plate is in the mood of this tale. Plate 1 shows lady yearning for her lover, Bundi school, about 1780. AD 
and from the collection of John Kenneth Galbraith Cambridge Massey Shoots it shows a lady with bare breasts lolling over a bed on a terrace her head rests on a bolster her body is caught in an agony of desire a companion more serene sympathizes with her torment the halo on the moon is a special characteristic of bundi painting of mid 18th century in the painting one can find manifold diversities of nature love scenes enacted in groves of plantains and palms the physical beauty of the nayak and nayika the collection in the prince of wales museum and an incomplete set of rasik priya in the national museum belong to this period the best ragmala paintings from bundi can be seen in alva museum and few leaves in virginia museum of fine arts plate 2 is an example of a page from ragmala series that is todi ragni belonging to bundi school dated 1765 80 opaque watercolor and ink on paper this ragmala was one of the most popular subjects depicted by bundi artists the todi ragni is visualized as a lonely love sick young woman standing near a river and wearing a yellow dress an orange sash that is patka and a yellow veil the todi ragni is thought to have originated in an enchanting song sung by village women to keep deer from eating their crops she is shown holding a veena that is a stringed musical instrument in her left hand and perhaps the grass in her right hand the deers emerging from the lush forest crowd the todi ragni expresses the mood of delightful adoration and is to be performed in the late morning another painting in plate 3 is also from the collection of virginia museum of fine arts it is from a ragmala series and titled asavari ragni belonging to bundi school dated 1765 to 1780 and it is in opaque water color and ink on paper asavari is quite ragni performed in the morning it is often visualized as a woman clad in a peacock feather or leaf skirt who charms snakes with the hypnotic sounds of a flute in this bundi painting asavari is shown blue skinned seated on rocks she is surrounded by a host of writhing serpents one of which she holds in her hand here the emotions of men and women are visualized in different seasons situations and expressed in vibrant colors bundi painting therefore shows all these influences there is mewar influence in the long oval shape of eyes the mogul style in the rounded female face and male costumes and the deccan influence in certain facial types and the treatment of landscape the placing of a pavilion a deccan characteristic forms an important part in the compositions of bundi pictures during the reign of rao raja vishnu singh dated 1773 to 1821 ad poetry and art made further advances as like his father 
he was also a great connoisseur of art thousands of verses based on shringar and bhakti were compiled by him he got many texts painted on the basis of the traditional shringar style an example of this period is in plate 4 it is of a heroine longing for her lover feeling the pangs of separation gazing at mating pigeons this belongs to bundi school dated to 1770 to 1780 it is painted in opaque watercolor and ink on paper and at present in the collection of virginia museum of fine arts this typical 18th century painting from bundi school shows a heroine heavy with indolence and longing swooning against a bluish gray roll pillow that is masnad set on a carpet she gazes at the mating pigeons that strut and bill and echo on a perch rising above the terrace and on the railing these amorous birds cause her to think of her absent lover the attendants surrounding the heroine one fans her one is sitting with veena and the third holds a garland another maid approaches her from the left her hand folded in greeting the brach verse from an unknown text is inscribed on the upper border two crutches that she uses for support during meditative trances appear on the either side of her she is accompanied by a woman wearing scarf and white skirt who holds a rosary to her right hand and a crutch to her left grassy knolls and blossoming roses fill the remainder composition on the upper red border is written hemala ki ragini 12 a painting titled in plate 5 is of dalliance belonging to bundi school dated 1790 and from the collection of kamar sangram singh of navalgarh jaipur it shows the lovers embracing each other on a terrace the eyes are deeply tinctured with love and the woman is in the mood of joyous abandon in the sky a male duck is in warm pursuit of its mate such symbols were common in rajput paintings to convey the mood and intention of lovers sohni swimming to meet mahival is depicted in plate 6 It belongs to Bundi school about 1790 from the collection of Kamar Sangram Singh of Navalgarh Jaipur on the bank of the river a hermit is dozing over a hookah in a hut a dog is lying curled up near the fire and on a tree peacock are sleeping with their heads concealed in their tail feathers one can feel the silence of the night Sohni is supported by a pitcher presumably a sound one Mahival seated under a tree is playing flute after him Raja Ram Singh 1821 to 1889 two patronized artists on a large scale and commissioned many pictures but because of the influence of company style paintings began to deteriorate During his time harsher colors lack of imagination poor and crude line drawings began to appear and by the second half of 19th century bundi style of painting lapsed thus the art style evolved at bundi had elements of mogal deccani and through mewar of ajanta gujarat jain and mewar's own 
indigenous art forms which gave Bundi an art style of exceptional character. Characteristics of Bundi school Nature The Bundi of nature in all its vastness, diversity and color is present with greater naturalism. The landscape is painted delicately. The lush landscape reflect the terrain of the state. Water is indicated in swirling eddies by means of white lines drawn on dark grey background. A pond filled with lotus fish and aquatic birds is favourite with Bundi artists. In some of the paintings, the plain background give ways to heavily shaded green mounds and the spectacularly coloured skies are painted in profuse and swirling patches of red, black, blue and gold. The trees of the garden are painted against a monochrome background. The use of massed plantain trees and crowded blossoming trees covered with flowering vines in red, pink, yellow and white are noteworthy. A row of trees at the top of the picture is a common characteristic. The variety of fountains connecting by channels and flower beds in foreground recall Deccan influence. The lush beauty of Mundi forests are also found tempered by Mughal manner in design and composition. In Bundi painting, the trees, flowers and water are not merely used as background but have been knit into romantic mood in the paintings, mainly devoted to tender grace of woman. Refined garden full of cypresses, fountain playing on all four corners of the square reveal superb craftsmanship. Male figure The male figures are painted tall and slim with slender waist and torso. The face is small, delicately rounded and reddish brown in color. A certain amount of shading of the face by darker washes of the same color is noticeable, particularly to indicate the curving planes of the cheek and the chin. Male dress The male dress is very similar to the Mughal style. In earlier paintings, the male figure's costume is a flat Atpati turban, a chakkardar jama, four-pointed, and a long narrow patka, typical of the Akbari and Jahangiri period. In later paintings, males are shown wearing cylindrical turban with a cross band, pechi, looped over forehead and one end arranged on top in a fan-like manner. The popular feature of the time of Shaja period was a stripped pyjama, transparent gherda jama and a broad patka decorated with floral motifs. All ornaments are worn. Female figure In the early 17th century paintings, the females have large faces with heavy chins and big eyes. The forehead, smeared with sandalwood paste, are of Mewar type. The Bodhi women have small round faces with deep red lips, thrusting noses and slightly receding chins. The faces are given depth and roundness with shading on cheeks, eyes and nose. The color of the face is reddish brown. The figures are shown a little taller than slender waists. They are adorned with ornaments. The armpit shadow in male and female is a convention derived from early Mughal painting. The first half of the 18th century marks the full flowering of Bundi school and also the period of its great productivity. By the second quarter of 18th century, the falling of technical excellence and draftsmanship becomes evident. The reddish brown color of face is replaced by pink. The smooth shading becomes harsh and streaky. White lines used to depict water becomes heavy. The plain background give way to heavily shaded green mouths and the sky is painted in profuse and swirling patches of red, black, blue and gold. The dresses of women are done 
in sumptuous gold. Female dress The dress of the female figures mainly of red and yellow colors consist of ghagra, short choli, patka and odhni on which can be seen tie and dye type of pattern so popular with bundi artists. In some paintings they are shown wearing paiswaj of transparent material secured below the breasts. A long narrow patka and dupatta draped over the head. Several rows of pearl necklaces adorn the throat and single pompons can be seen at the wrist and arm. In the first half of the 18th century, the bosom is left exposed but later on it is covered by drawing the scarf over the bosom and under the arm on the left much in the way the same is draped. Gold ornamentation is done on women's clothes. Subjects The principal subjects painted in Bundi school were mainly of Ragas and Raganis, Naika Bhed, Ritu Varnan, Bara Masa, Royal Court Festivals, Wars, etc. Because of Vallabh sect, pictures of Krishna Leela were mainly painted. They included Rasik Priya, Bihari Satsai, Ras Raj and other verses. Animals and Birds Animals like lion, deers, monkeys, elephant, fish and geese sporting in water, peacocks, squirrels and parrots added life in the paintings. Colors Bodhi paintings are superbly composed in color balance. The colors used are mainly blue, green, red and yellow. Architecture In Bodhi paintings, Mewad influence is visible in architecture setting consisting of a typical dome with balcony. The walls with niches containing bottles and cups of colored glass and paneled pattern at the base. Kota In the year 1952, Kota style came into limelight when Colonel T.G. Gear Anderson gifted his personal collection of Rajput paintings and drawings to Victoria and Albert Museum, London. Up till then, the scholars were unaware about the existence of Kota style paintings. These paintings were different from Bundi style because of its high artistic quality and originality. Kota, situated in the east of Rajasthan, is very near to Bundi and the style developed could also be considered a sub-branch of Bundi style. But its distinctive style gave it a separate identity as the Kota style of painting. As a token of esteem, Emperor Shah Jah gifted few territories to Madhu Singh Hada, second son of Raja Ratan Singh Rao of Bundi. As a result, in 1631 AD, a separate state of Kota came into being. But on the basis of available facts, its establishment is considered to be the end of 17th century when paintings at Kota were executed in a style derived from that of Bundi. Kota had its art inspirations and roots from Bundi, sharing several of its art attributes. Raja Ram Singh is considered to be the first patron 1696 to 1705 AD for creating an independent Kota style. Paintings of his period are available in the Municipal Museum, Allahabad. In a painting, Ram Singh is shown attended by courtiers and ladies. After Raja Ram Singh, Krishna Bhakti tradition was given special regard by Maharaval Bhim Singh, who ruled from 1703 to 1720 AD. He built temple of Shri Krishna and changed his name to Krishna Das and Kota's name to Nandgram and Barsana of Shergar, making Kota a Braj Bhumi. Paintings related to Krishna Leela themes were painted in great number. 
after Maharaval Bhim Singh, Arjun Singh, who ruled from 1720 to 1764, also continued with the same tradition of getting Krishna Charitra paintings made. The State Museum of Kota has a great number of paintings of the period. In Plate 7, the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts has a painting, Krishna admonishes the gopis, dated 1725 to 1750 AD. The top and bottom side of the border of the paintings has text written in Sanskrit. The verses states that the illustration is from book 10 of the Bhagavad Puran, chapter 29, verses 18, 19, 28, 30, which records the adventures of Krishna's youth, including his enormous exploits with gopis at Vrindavan. The tourist depicted in the painting takes place at night in the forest of Vrindavan. A moon that is full and perfectly round hangs in the powder blue sky. Below in a dense jungle of plantains, cypresses, palms and other varieties of trees and shrubs, the dark lord and the gopis stand within a silver circle. A lotus filled stream flows in the foreground of the painting. The moon's silvery orb is reflected in its gently moving waters. Rendered with a quick, spontaneous line in lush shades of green, red and orange, this miniature is typical of those produced in Kota during the second quarter of the 18th century. The density, variety and detail of the luxuriant jungle and lively crowd of gopis, for example, are successfully offset by large empty expanses of silver and blue. During Raja Umed Singh period from 1771 to 1820, the Kota style matured suddenly and gradually reached its climax. From childhood days, Umed Singh was an expert rider. Colonel Todd in his books, Annals and Antiquities of Rajasthan describes him as the best horseman and marksman in the country. And it was for this reason that some of the liveliest hunting pictures in Indian art were painted during Umed Singh's period. A painting of 1770 shows Raja Umed Singh protected by courtiers with matchlocks shooting at tigers with bow and arrow. This painting is in the collection of Victoria and Albert Museum, London. Another painting dated 1771 shows him hunting wild boar, hunting a tiger, 1780 to 1790 AD. Now in the collection of Virginia Museum of Fine Arts are excellent example. It is a fact that during his reign, artists took keen interest in depicting hunting themes. The dense forests of Kota abounded with many wild animals like tiger, cheetah, pig, deer, lion, etc. Plate 8 shows hunting a tiger dated to 1780 to 1790 AD belonging to Kota, ink and opaque watercolor on paper and at present in the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts. Kota painters specialized in dynamic scenes of hunt, a favorite pastime of India's princess. In the painting, two mounted riders, probably a Bundi ruler, man with long spear, and his companion charge in at full gallop from the right. They attack a tiger as it viciously mauls a fallen rider and his horse on the lower left. A second tiger confidently strides into the scene from the lower right. Rocks, tall grasses, shrubby trees and bushes typical of Kota hunting scenes cover the hills that rise behind the combat tents. The long reign of Umed Singh was followed by the precarious political interlude of Maharao 
Kishore Singh, who ruled from 1819 to 1827. In spite of mediation by the British political agent, the conflict between Maharao and the Diwan Minister Raj Rana Jalim Singh continued. Maharao went into exile and stayed at the shrine of Shri Nath Ji in the Nath Dwara. Some of the large-sized paintings inspired by the contemporary festivals or visits to the holy shrine were painted by artists. An example in plate nine is of Maharaja Kishore Singh of Kota participating in the Vijay Dashmi celebration with the burning of the effigies of Ravan and other demons. This painting belongs to Kota and is dated to 1822. to 1833 it is in the collection of ss baklewala raja ram singh to 1822 to 1866 ad to maintain the tradition and got painted the court scenes and hunting scenes the landscapes were treated with exquisite delicacy and lions acquired verisimilitude a great majority of pictures were painted in strong dazzling colors among which are mostly courtly adventures of ram singh himself many of these paintings can be seen in the palace of kota ram singh too of kota riding in procession dated to 1850 ad is from the collection of victoria and albert museum london after ram singh's death it is unlikely that the pictures of great artistic merit were painted here one can see british influence which heralded its downfall like that of other painting schools the paintings have become harsh and garnish in plate 10 is depicted maharaja ram singh too who ruled from 1827 to 1865 of kota visiting the shrine of dakor ji at prabhas kota it is dated to 1830 and at present in bharat kala bhavan banaras this scene of worship is with ram singh too as the principal character here the consolidation of the earliest stylistic traits and the formation of an idiom intensifying the drama of visual reality takes place during raja chhatrasal who ruled from 1866 to 1889 lakshmi narayan raghunath and govind ram were foremost artists the families of some painters still live there they are called sheikhs they are hindus and muslims by caste a painting in the kota museum shows raja chhatrasal loaded with garland of roses and mobbed by beeves of girls as he rides a vast charger One can also find series of pen and ink sketches based on early prototypes. Because of Kota's dense forests, the rajas had built hunting lodges near lakes to which wild animals came at night to drink water. One of the paintings show ladies sitting in a hunting lodge watching herd of deer quenching their thirst on the opposite side is shown a pair of lion characteristics of kota paintings the main characteristics of kota paintings is the vibrant life with which the forest is imbued the thick jungle surrounding the area instilled a feeling of awe in the inhabitants and emotion is reflected in the artist's work the lush green vegetable the menens of large trees and plants through which animals roam unfettered impart a unique quality to kota paintings choice of themes and befitting rendering depiction of beauty and charm scenes of various art organs similitude motifs contrast and balance manipulating diverse forms and elements characteristics kota paintings were highly imaginative in the expressiveness the hunting expedition were organized with meticulous eye for the detail based on war plays and invariably included queens and princesses 
दो डिपिक्शन ऑफ हंटिंग सीन इज सुपर्ब इन कोटा पेंटिंग्स बट विथ अलाइक विगर दे पोर्ट्रे दे पैटर्न लाइकनेस रिलीजियस सेलिब्रेशन फेस्टिवल्स प्रोसेशन दरबार सीन्स इवेंट्स ऑफ प्रेजेंट एंड पास्ट कृष्ण लीला थीम्स बारा मासा राग रागनीस दशा अवतार एंड द स्टोरीज ऑफ मधु मालती एंड ढोला मारो इन द वॉर सीन्स इमोशंस ऑफ एंगर आर मोस्ट पावरफुली डिपेक्टेड इन हंटिंग सीन्स द नेचर इज मोर वाइब्रेंट एंड रियलिस्टिक देन इन बूंदी पेंटिंग्स The Kota artists have wide range of colors and softer tones of green, blue and yellow are worth appreciating.